Hello everyone, welcome to the next video. So today's video is going to be about Ashes of Creation, um, a new game that is still in development. It's still in the alpha stage at the moment, looking like we're potentially going to get alpha 2 this year as well. Not officially confirmed yet, but I'm pretty confident on everything I'm seeing that it's looking like that's what it's going to be. Today's video is basically going to give you a generalized overview of everything you're going to need to know about Alf, uh, about Ashes of Creation, sorry, um, and a kind of so you can make your mind up on whether it's worth investing in the game. It's one of them games that's going to apparently... They reckon it's going to completely change the MMO genre. And I'm going to go through all the little bits that is new. What they're bringing from old MMOs. What my opinion is on it. And all that kind of jazz. Uh, feel free to agree or disagree with anything I say in the comments below. It really helps out the channel if you're commenting. Uh, good or bad. <laughs> Hopefully good. I, I hope good. And look, if you enjoy the content, it would mean a huge amount to me if you could just drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing's free, and if you decide you don't like the direction the content's going in, you can always come back and subscribe at a later date. Hopefully you don't. But, you know, give me a chance to prove to you guys that I'm actually worth watching. Um, still trying to grow this thing, so I'm out here trying. So look, guys, we're going to get straight into the video. Today's video is actually sponsored by Visuals by Impulse. So if you're a content creator, you know, we've got a little bit for you guys in there with a little link down below. We'll jump into the sponsorship and then we're going to go straight into the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks again for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye. Visuals by Impulse it offers premium designs for all budgets, beginners, or veterans. They have unique and custom design templates which save you time on your content's design and future updates. Not to mention, it allows current or potential sponsors to easily work with your brand assets and continue your chosen theme. There is a theme for everyone on the marketplace with endless designs to choose from. You can customize and truly make each design unique to your channel and community. If you want to check these guys out and help support the channel, please use my affiliate link below where you will get a 15% discount code and also help get a kickback on the channel as well. Thank you. Ashes of Creation is an upcoming MMORPG currently being developed by Interpret Studios. Despite being in its first alpha stage of playtesting, the game is already looking promising and many have claimed it as a potential to completely reinvigorate and revive the MMORPG genre. While it's hard to say that for, so for sure so early, the design philosophies and plans for the game are quite exciting. As a result, it's currently one of the most hyped upcoming games in the genre, which I am very excited about. There are a lot of features and systems to go over that are unique to the game, but because the game still has a way to go, everything that I do mention in this video is subject to change. However, the features and systems that I am going to be mentioning are actually quite core to Ashes of Creation and likely won't be altered too much between now and the actual game's release. Also, do take a note that due to the complexity of the game, I'm not going to be going completely in depth on every single aspect of the game, but I'm going to be covering the main ones and how they'll be utilized and give you guys a generalized overview. Keep an eye out for future videos that will go into more in depth details about each topic I discuss in this video. Perhaps the biggest reason that people call Ashes of Creation revolutionary or a wow killer is because the main philosophies the developers have adopted for the game, the three main cores Interpret's design philosophies revolve around are an ever changing world a heavy emphasis on player interaction and systems that reward and necessitize risk taking. In many cases, these three ideas mesh in ways MMO players have wanted for a long time. They are also hugely, hugely, hugely up on the no peer to win vibe as well, which we love. So let's talk about the actual world of Ashes of Creation. So firstly, Vera, which is the world that it's set in, is meant to be dynamic and will frequently change. It hosts a variety of biomes and types of areas across it, incredibly large map that will change over time. More importantly, there will be something called the node system. In brief, this is something that allows players interaction to control where civilization sprouts and evolves. There is a lot to say about this, and I will be explaining this in a bit of a later section, but overall, it's what will keep the game ever changing and create a unique world history dictated entirely by the players. Moving on from actually d discussing the players, the player to player interaction is one of the main design philosophies that is emphasized on in their live streams and when they discuss the game. One of the most important aspects of MMOs is the fact that so many players can play the game together, right? Either as allies or 
enemies in some instances, like for example in World of Warcraft you've got the Alliance and the Horde. In many of today's modern MMOs, it can be lost on too much instanced content and streamlined progression systems that can all be done as a solo player. Ashes of Creation wants to flip that around. Working with and against other players is quite key to the game, and it's evident through the things like their economy, their open world PvP, the PvP systems like castle sieges and caravans, node progression. These various different systems will be explained in more detail later on in their respective sections. But it's just giving you guys an overall review on what it's going to be like player to player interaction. There is a huge risk to reward gameplay aspect of this game. Ashes of Creation will definitely not be a game you can just AFK in and progress after you put in enough time. It will be relatively hardcore and its content will always require engagement. With much of it involving some sort of risk. There won't be a lot of instanced content, meaning PvP may be present in PvE content for example. Another example is that resources, items and wealth you gather in one place can't be automatically transferred to another town or city. It must be moved via a caravan, which other players can attack to loot. The last instance in the cities and towns can be destroyed, along with player-owned housing and the, so on, like stuff like that. So if you set up, if you set up a town in a like a volatile region, as dictated by player interaction and conflict, you could potentially lose a great amount of time and in-game money or resources. So you need to be careful with things like that. Along with all of this, there is an instance on making content that everyone and anyone can enjoy. There are things for all players of all sorts and all skill level with a proposed equal focus on PvP, PvE, and life skill related content. If Interpret can execute on all three areas well by the time the game's launched, with compelling systems for each, they'll be able to attract players of every kind and bring them together in a fantastic way. So let's talk about the Node system. The Node system is basically a very unique system that is quite unique to Ashes of Creation in itself. And probably one of the most exciting things that I'm quite excited about. Essentially, when pl the players drop into the world of Vera, there'll be in a vast wilderness, blank canvas. At this point, there will be a grand total of 118 nodes, which are placed where villages, towns, and cities can grow from. Depending on where players decide to interact by gathering resources and killing mobs, civilization will grow. Another interesting fact is that the nodes' architecture will reflect the race that puts in the most work to it. The nodes do have different stages and the players will develop them and grow them in size, in their influence and their impact over time. The nodes have six stages of development after the wilderness stage. The first one being expedition slash crossroads. The second being an encampment or a camp. Third is a village. Four fourth is a town. Fifth is a city. And six is classed as a metropolis. Basically, what each stage does is make the node grow in size and will increase the amount of quality of NPCs, quests, resources, mobs, benefits, and more. However, as one node in an area grows, its zone of influence grows too, which will lock out nearby nodes from advancing. While this might discourage some who put a lot of time into growing nodes, there is a PvP system in place to destroy a node called Node Sieges, which are large-scale PvP events that can happen to nodes at village level or higher. The nodes also have different types. There's four different types of nodes, each with its own benefits for players, quest lines, features, and aesthetics. There is economic, which is more focused on trading and mercantile focus. Divine, which is based around faith and skill equipment augment focuses. There's military, which is combat and class training focuses. And there's scientific, which is artisan and construction focus. These four types of nodes will clearly catered to certain types of players and with that said any player can find usefulness from any node so for example if you're a player who enjoys crafting but is in a guild who decides to base themselves as a military node you don't have to worry about it despite not being focused on the artisan classes the node could be a great opportunity to make money after all the war hungry players will always need new gear and equipment likewise pvp players can find opportunity in economic nodes attacking or defending caravans perhaps it should also be noted that a player can be a citizen of only one node, meaning it will be important to choose it wisely and protect it if it comes under attack. As a final point, each node will have a mayor, which can guide the development of the node. They set tax rates, designate plots for different types of buildings, and, you know, there'll be so much more to come, I'm, I'm sure. 
The method by which each type of node elects a mayor is different and follows the theme of the node. More information on the electoral system and node system as a whole, I'm going to go into in a separate video because I could spend all day talking about them. Last thing I'm going to touch on in the nodes is the guild castles, castles and castle nodes. There is a type of node that exists outside of the typical node mold. They're called guild castles. There will be only five of these in the world and will come to be owned by guilds. They don't have zones or influence like other nodes do. However, they will have three dedicated castle nodes to feed into them and receive the castle's benefits. The castles grant great benefits to the guild that own them, including setting tax rates for the castle nodes, activating special events for players in the castle nodes to enjoy, and again, so much more to come. These nodes will level up faster than normal nodes, but are limited to the village stage and to the military type. Also, only ruling guild members are considered garrisoned to the castle, and they don't have normal citizenship. The danger for the guild that owns the castle is that each month they must defend it in a large-scale PvP event aptly named the Castle Siege. The guild and their allies must defend the castle in a proposed 250 v 250 PvP battle to retain control. 250. This system will be hugely influential in regional and global politics and there's a lot to be said about it again. A separate video will be that on a lot more in depth. Moving on from the world, so to say, we're going to look at the combat system now. So the combat is one of the cores of an MMO, and in this game, it's absolutely no exception at all. Like many other systems, it's set to be fairly unique. First and foremost, the combat in Ashes of Creation will incorporate tab targeting and action combat systems. For those that are unfamiliar with what these are, in short, tab targeting implies that you lock onto a single target to aim your attacks and abilities at or around. On the other hand, action combat is a bit more hands-on, as the other player essentially controls exactly where they dodge and aim their abilities in a skill shot-like fashion. Most MMOs focus heavily on one style, but Ashes of Creation is kind of changing that. Both options will always be there, and their skill tree system allows for players to shift their focus more into one style or into passive abilities as well. On that note though, the skill trees are planned to have quite a bit of depth. Players will have the option of putting points into a wealth of different skills, spells, or abilities and put their points into fewer select ones to better specialise in them. However, it will be impossible to max out all skills in any skill tree. Because of that, thinking ahead for your build will be imperative. A full guide on builds I'm going to do in the near future. That's probably going to be the next video. But let's quickly talk around the class system in Ashes of Creation. At the outset, a new player can choose one of eight classes. After leveling the first class up, they'll have, two, they'll have to choose another class, which will give them an entirely new class as a combination of the two. Choosing the same class a second time pretty much gives you better versions of your original class. But again, I'm going to go into it a little bit more in a more detailed video. So let's talk about PvP now. PvP gameplay is the main driving force for a change in the world of Vera. Whether small or large scale, violent interactions between players are actually quite important to this game, especially so when considering Interpret insists on it and focuses many of their systems around it. On a small scale, there will be PvP available almost everywhere as the game will feature open world PvP. That's, that's a given. This means that players can attack other players anywhere at any time. There will be, of course, exceptions to this in places like cities, but in the wilderness, it's no holes barred every man for himself. This is even more so when in prime hunting grounds or rare resource areas. Don't fret there is a way to stop or at least disincentivize griefers from simply killing people over and over again called corruption. Corruption grows on players the more they kill other players, the higher their corruption, the more negative effects they'll have and the more they'll be hunted by other players for coin. Another quite cool instance of the small scale PvP revolves around the caravans which we touched on earlier. Resources obviously don't magically move across distances and you can't transfer them. Players must manually move them. This is done through mount drawn caravans, which you can get skins for as well, actually. If you pre-order the game, there's a skin you can get for your caravan. And basically, they'll drive from point A to point B from one node to another or wherever you want to go. Other players can attack that caravan and if they successfully destroy the cart, they can loot the contents. This will make traders hire guards for their dealings, while some groups may thrive looting and plundering. There will be also things like arenas for gladiator fights. There's going to be sea-based naval PvP. There will be duels and bounty hunting. I don't have a, f 
huge amount of information on this stuff yet, but I can imagine that bounty hunting is going to relate to the corruption. So let's say someone has a certain, uh, let's say the highest corruption in that area, for example, they might have a bounty on their head and people can go kill them for a lot of money. The world driving PvP aspect of it um, is basically what the grand scale events are really what will make Ashes of Creation truly unique. The first of this type was alluded to before with the Northern Castle systems. Interpret Studios plan to ensure the world is never stable by allowing players and organizations to attack nodes themselves in node sieges. The main incentive of this is that if they win, the attackers will be able to loot the entire node. And of course, the citizens of the node won't want to lose their property. These can't be initiated on a whim and require forethought and planning, but are certainly world-changing events. It's kind of like a better version of New World's sieges, essentially. Right now, as it stands, castle sieges are the pride and joy of what Ashes of Creation are talking around when they're talking about PvP. They're currently stated to be 250v250 player combat scenarios where a guild and its allies defend their castle against an attacking force. They want all the boons that a castle can provide. There are, there are plans to increase the count to 500 versus 500. I don't know what that'll be like. If anyone's ever played Elder Scrolls Online, you can imagine what the lag is ridiculous. But on the NES servers, they recently fixed that. So hopefully there is, the, it, which shows it can be done. So hopefully there is ways around this and that it's not just glitchy lag all over the place because I hate that shit. During the castle siege, there will be siege weapons, grand st strategy, and neutral mobs like dragons that provide buffs for the team that slays it. In a recent development update, the team showcasted Alpha 1 footage of a castle siege, and even so early on, it looked fantastic. Like, I'm not going to lie, it looked really good. In addition, guilds are able to go head-to-head -head with each other in guild wars. While not as huge as the castle sieges and so on, there will be dynamic conflicts that are simply a contest of killing more enemy guild members. There will be objectives, maybe like assassinating VIP members or sieging a guild's fortress along with victory and surrender conditions. Now, moving away from the PvP side of things, let's just talk about the PvE section for a bit. For anyone who's interested in that, obviously, I'm not saying you shouldn't be, like, I'm also interested in it. The PvE combat revolves around players fighting the game's monsters and villains, mobs, and so on, with the helps of others or by themselves. Overall, this is the bulk of the combat done on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, when you're grinding gear or grinding skills. Like other MMOs, Ashes of Creation will have quests, dungeons, and raids. And obviously, these all vary in scale, but if you've played any MMO before, you, you get what the, what, what the crack is. I'm going to go over the dungeons a little bit more in depth in a little minute. But first off, you're going to get quests. They cover a lot of different types of content. They really don't want it to be copy and paste, like certain other games that done that ridiculously a lot in their questing. Some quests will be quick one and done tasks some will be full-on story arcs that shape the narrative of the world or just a specific region funnily enough others will be fairly random like raid bosses appearing in a region or a natural disaster occurring if the quest isn't finished there will also be quests that get certain content or drop legendary equipment quests are just day-to-day -day adventures that players can undertake to level up get new gear advance their node while they may not take the limeweight the limelight when up against things like sieges and rage, it's still important to nail down on these things since you're going to be partaking in them pretty regularly, especially on the lower levels while you're grinding out your gear. Ashes of Creation really want to make this fun to play and not just a game where you get on and try and speed run to max level for end game content. They want people to enjoy it from level one all the way up to max level. And I'm really looking forward to the different types of quests we can do and how they'll affect the world. Not just a case of, all right, I've now got another 2,000 XP on my bar. So let's talk about the dungeons and raids for a second. They're basically the bread and butter of any PvP content in the majority of MMOs, and most likely will be for Ashes of Creation. As is typical, they will range in size, severity, and complexity. Uniquely, Ashes of Creation dungeons will primarily exist in the open world. Only 20% of the actual dungeons are set to be instanced while the rest of the 80% dungeons will be open for anyone to jump in on. Dungeons will become more difficult the further down you go, with bosses that live there, each with its own loot table. It is important to note that dungeons are expected to be large enough for multiple groups to go through at the same time without interfering with each other. And then moving on to the raids, which are normally higher scale dungeons. 
and they mainly live in the form of fighting world bosses. These bosses are planned to be triggered both randomly and by completing certain steps. Some raid raids even have multiple stages where you'll fight underlings before fighting the big bad. Raids will require a decent amount of players to take down and depending on the player's performance, the boss may scale up or down to accommodate who it's fighting. So while PvP is crucial in actually shaping the world, the PvE is largely affected by the current state of the world. So depending on regional nodes, types and stages of development, the PvE content will change. One metropolis node may have two huge dungeons, while a village node will only have one small one, for example. The final thing we're just going to touch over here, or one of the final things, sorry, is the life skills. Not everyone wants to kill monsters all the time, so life skills are important for adding depth to an MMO. Life skills refer to non-combat classes that are akin to the real world jobs. They're ones that revolve around gathering natural resources, crafting materials, finished finished products. In Ashes of Creation, there are three separate types of artisan paths with the specific classes dubbed professions. The first is gathering. They go out into the wilderness to harvest resources or tend to farm and the like. The six gathering professions are farming, fishing, herbalism, herbalism lumberjacking, mining, and taming. The professions that take raw materials and refine them are aptly allocated to the processing path. It is more limited branch, but important for making the materials for the crafting professions to utilize. The only two that are currently planned or are known is animal husbandry and smelting. And then at the end of the line is the crafting. These are very diverse and utilize both gathering and processing to create finished products of all sorts. And there are 10 that we know of in total being alchemy, armor smithing, blacksmithing, carpentry, cooking, jewelry, crafting, scribbing, ship building, siege weapon building, weapon smithing. While there are still many questions about the specifics of these professions, if you're familiar with these jobs from other MMOs, it's safe to say they'll probably be quite similar. And it is also crucial to note that while a player is able to at least try out each type of profession, they may only become a master in one of the three paths. The good news is that even though you're fairly restricted to one path, you can max out on all different professions within it. So guys, that's all from me on this. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Again, if you found it useful, then please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel. There will be more Ashes of Creation content coming very soon. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.